Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at some of the text updates in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, Adobe is always adding new things to Premiere Pro, and I'm specifically showing you, I put together the latest text updates, text, type, fonts, graphics, whatever you want to call them. But they bundled them together in, in uh, text updates. Some of these are easy to miss. Some of, them, some of these you probably would never use, but it's important to just have them in the back of your head. The first one is an overflow indicator, and this is something that has been around since PageMaker days. Anybody out there use PageMaker? Yeah, baby, I did. Okay, so let's have a look at this uh, text here. It looks like it's complete, but it's not. If I select the text with just the uh, selection uh, arrow, you see this red indicator that's telling me I have overflow text. And this happens when you have text in a box, not if you just click once. There's point text and then there's text, paragraph text. If I grab the bottom of this and drag it out, you'll see I start showing more text. There's still more here. If I drag the box bigger, it's there's still more text. Okay, you see it disappears there when it gets to the bottom. So now I've got that fully showing. Very useful. This can happen if you created the text with a different font and then you change that font that's a little bit larger and now it's, it's being cut off because the box isn't big enough. So when you're making text, just to show you uh, very quickly, if I've got the type tool here, if you click once and add text, it adds it like that. Uh, but if you click and drag, then you add text like this in a box. And now it's text in a box. Same thing as before, we can overflow that text. And let me just find that guy and get rid of him. Okay, so there we got that text. Now what you can do is you can flip this between two types of text. To get the, the right menu though, you need to be in the properties and you need to have that text box selected to get this wrench. If you just click on the graphic and ha have nothing selected, you're not going to get that wrench. It doesn't exist anywhere in here. So click it because this is a text box uh, attribute. Now when you click in here, you can change this from paragraph text to point text. So if I change this to point text and click OK, you can see that it's now point text. So when I change the box, it's making this smaller because this is, there. it actually put a return in here. So if I delete this, then I'm deleting that point text. It doesn't really truly behave like I would expect though. I would expect that, uh, that if I select that and copy it and then come over here and click once and paste it, that's the way point text works um, in, in Premiere Pro. Um, if you were in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and you had all of that text in your clipboard and you clicked once, it would make a, a continuous line until and it would go right out of the frame onto the other side. Premiere Pro does point text a little bit differently for whatever reason. Okay, next up is ligatures. And, and you would have seen that when I clicked on that little guy there too, ligatures. Not every font contains ligatures. 
Ligatures have lots of uses. They can be stylistic or they can be help in legibility. Um, some of the most common ligatures are for body text. This is when you're reading a whole bunch of very small text in a book. And an F and an F and an L can actually bump into each other. So when the the type designer is making that font, they'll actually make a separate font that is one character that includes FFL and they're connected in such a way that it's just more legible. FE, THE, HE, EY, there's lots of different variations of, of that. And InDesign is the ruler of all of this. If you if go mess around in InDesign, um, it's the king of, of working with type. But you can also do this in, in Premiere Pro and this particular typeface, uh, the ligature is the TH. You see how the H is underneath that. So if I turn this off and click OK, then it's turned off. So it, it's just, a, it's not right or wrong. For this one, it's a stylistic choice, the way that it works. Another big update is being able to support colored fonts. And colored fonts have existed for a while, but Premiere Pro could not use them. So I'll select this and go to it. I've got a few color typefaces um, loaded up. There's Utopian one color and Utopian two color. I've also got another one Gilbert color, which I think looks really good for this particular title. Pops up. Very interesting. You can't control the overlay. You can't control the color. That's what the, the typeface designer created for this particular look. So there are more and more typefaces that are coming out that have this kind of support for color that's built into the font, built into the typeface. Um, and you can try that out. Next up is being able to look at uh, visual styles. So back in the same, uh, we're back in the properties, clicking on the title. If you twirl these up, you can get to the style. So this is a linked style that I've, I've changed. You can see the word edited there. I can pick any of the styles that I have loaded over here on the left. And if I go to my um, thumbnail, of my icon view, I'll see them over here. And if I go over here, I'll also see them here. Now I changed this to a different font. So now when I click on these, I can change that and update it. And that opened up my styles and you can have local styles and I can show those local styles here. You can add to the local styles. So if I click on this button, I can create a style from the selection. I can import a style also. So if you have other uh, projects that you want to import styles from or you've got styles in that folder, you can bring them in and we can look at this um, as an icon or as a list view. Now the, the next one, as you can see here, makes me sad. And that's because uh, the Premiere Pro team is not doing as well as the Photoshop team. So I'm challenging them to get better with uh, things like emojis. If you wanna add emojis, as if you're typing them in text, not bringing in a graphic. Bringing in a graphic is easy. It's like bring a ping in or a JPEG or whatever, and, it, and it's an emoji. I'm talking about being able to type an emoji in. I'll put a link in the description to the Mac demonstration that uses the edit menu on a Mac where the emojis are at the bottom. Premiere Pro supports those color emojis, but it doesn't support them on Windows. Um, not because they can't be used, it's just because the Premiere Pro team hasn't got that stuff together. So a workaround that I found is to use a Photoshop file. And that's what this is here. It's, it's an emoji and it's this PSD here. So if I go and find that in the project, there it is. If I double click on it, that's what it is. And if I open that up, so here it is in Photoshop. If I make a selection and on Windows, I press the Windows key and the period key, then I can change it right here. 
if I save this, go back to Premiere Pro, it's going to update. Go back over here, do a different one, and I can get to all of my emojis here, all the last ones I've used, or it's exactly the same as, as the Mac menu, it's just using a different version. Save that, go there, and there it is. Because if I added an emoji directly here, so watch this, I'll click, I'll hit the same keyboard, and now the, this is using the appearance that I had before. So it's using those different, this, the style that I had. Oop. Oop, there we go. You can see it's just a, a, a flat emoji but here you've got the full color emojis just using Photoshop. I'm sure Premiere Pro is going to support um, adding them in in color, full color in the newest updates. And it supports, uh, Photoshop just supports everything that, that uh, Premiere Pro supports on the Mac. The Premiere Pro team just needs to get their act together and stop looking like a clown. Ooh, see how they did that? Woo. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Go there and download a whole bunch of free stuff. Donate once monthly. You don't even have to download uh, to donate to download. You can go over there and just get free stuff and uh, have some fun. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to dig into all the little updates that uh, Premiere Pro has for text and let you know um, what you can do with it.